We are here with the man of the hour, Mr. Dean Dillon. How are you? Man, somebody else said that a while ago. Man of the hour. I told him man of the minute. No. <laughs> no way. <laughs> this is so exciting to see this movie come to fruition. When you met Cole and he said he wanted to do your life story, what was your first response? You're crazy. <laughs> you into it. I know you and I know that you're not one that's really forthcoming with all of that information so how do you talk you into it it just seemed natural he was he just seemed real and sincere and honest about it and uh, I'd been approached before about doing something along those lines and it never did feel right and the timing never felt right but but uh, it felt right with him and uh, we hit it off and put a game plan together and uh, he did. I thought he did a great job yeah. of, doing, of putting it together. I did. What was it like to see yourself the first time when he sent you the screener and you're watching it? What was that moment like for you? I don't know. I was watching everybody else. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I really wasn't zoomed in on me as much as I was everybody else. Were you nervous about any particular person when they popped up on the screen like, uh-oh, they're going to say something they probably shouldn't say? Dale Dotson. <laughs> What were you thinking he was going to say? Uh, I can't repeat. Okay. You know what? I was looking at the list, and the fact that this is called Tennessee Whiskey, and my friend Caroline actually brought this to my attention. Tennessee Whiskey has been recorded by three different people, three totally different versions. How four. did ha, – four? Yeah. Four. Okay, talk to me about how a song like that has a life and finds its way through with four different recordings. Well, when I wrote it originally with uh, Linda Hargrove, of course, I pitched it to George Strait first, as I did everything else I wrote it at the time, well, throughout my career. But uh, it was funny, he didn't, it didn't ring his bell, and uh, it just so happened that uh, George Jones was looking for uh, songs at the time, and I pitched it to George, and he cut it, and we sat there at, it climbed the charts to two and sat there for six weeks because of another little song called if i said you had a beautiful body would you hold oh. it against me was number one well we finally got them out of the way for yeah. one week okay and then uh and then a couple years went by and uh an old running buddy of mine david allen crow he cut it called me up said come on up to the house listen to this and i went up there and i thought he did it, cut a great version of it and then about 10 years ago brad paisley cut that song on an album and then uh you know lo and behold three four years ago i get a phone call uh from ronnie bowman and over the phone he plays me this r b version of of tennessee whiskey and it's chris stapleton singing it and i'm going man this is incredible and i just love stapleton's version because he made it his own you know, and it was so far removed from Jones' version, obvi obviously, but Chris just wore it out, and uh, I, was, I was just thrilled. You know what? I could sit and talk to you all night long, but we don't have that time because we got to watch this movie together. Are you excited about it? Oh, yeah. All right, good stuff. Tennessee Whiskey, the one and only Dean Dillon.